Hey guys, we're back working on the Bonneville's motor. Uh, we're still waiting on parts for the transmission, so we're just doing this. Last we left off here, we were kind of uh, dealing with the valve lash. Is that what it's called? Uh, the lifter preload, checking yeah, lifter it, preload. making sure these things are in spec with the push rods. So what we did basically is we're focusing on the first bank here, and uh, first you want to get the intake closed and uh, the exhaust just open so you can watch the valves through the inlets actually and then you loosen it and then get it just finger tight uh, where you can't do any more just get snug with and, the uh, the push rod still able to spin while you're doing this and then you get your torque wrench set it to the torque specs and then turn it and as long with our setup as long as it's within it was half a turn. Yeah, three quarter, three eighths of a turn to a half a turn. It would, it would be good. So I set it right here, and it went all the way around to about there, and then we heard a click. So it was under half a turn uh, on both of these, and we did the opposite. Basically, we open, we closed the exhaust valve, and just until the intake valve opened, loosened this, got it snug with our fingers, and then it was less than half a turn to torque it down to twenty three foot pounds. Since he already torqued all of these down and we checked these two, the rest should be identical. So yeah. we don't have to check the rest. So this should be within spec. Uh, the Project F's motor is kind of still in question. I mean, w all I did when we constructed this valve train was we had the 130 pound lifters, and then we had seven inch push rods, which are spec for the cam, uh, the XP cam and sock rockers. And I just did them to torque spec. So yeah, we'll, we might we can check, it's really easy. Yeah, quick, we'll, so. we'll, we'll check just the first bank, see if everything's good. But uh, yeah, all should be good there. So the, the valve covers are, I mean, once I get these just a little bit more painted, we can throw those on there. Those honestly look so much better after they, the sandblast. They do look so much better. No bubbling, but for somehow, even though these were in a box, they got like some kind of dust on them mm. and whatever. I'm not, it doesn't have to be perfect, Yeah. but I want to, I want uh, to tape this off and have like the red go through those lines and I didn't have it at home so I couldn't do that at home and they're also not clear coated yet but uh yeah then we could get those on yep so uh I don't know what else we're doing I mean we're go we already checked the valve lash so we've kind of confirmed that we want to get the intake manifold the lower intake manifold on uh, yes I don't think we'll put the uh the supercharger on before we install it because with the intercooler stacked and the supercharger, once it's in the car, the back side of the engine right here will be really hard to reach. So for us to get like exhaust and other stuff on. So uh, we're honestly kind of like losing stuff to do waiting for the transmission parts. We just need to, I mean, we can paint it too. We get the valve covers on yeah. or cover these and paint the block. Um, we also have some other parts that we still actually need to clean. This is the back um, plate and we need to get this new rear main seal in. And uh, yeah, lot, lots to do still, but we don't exactly have all the parts we need. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and start working on that. I guess we're gonna see about uh, getting the intake manifold on. Oh yeah, some updates. So the Bonnie, as you guys know, if you've been following, uh, this engine is going back together with uh, 90 pound valve springs. It's going with LS7 lifters, VS cam, and uh what else i'm not sure what i else. mean it's got its bumped up compression because this is a camaro engine and then also uh 3.29 gears which is yeah. cool but uh she's getting two brand new axles she's getting uh gxp brakes i'm rebuilding a, a set of uh front calipers so those are gonna be brand new brakes brand new rotors brand new pads which should be cool i've been wanting those v8 brakes to go on my car for a long time and if anybody has a set of extra GXP uh, rear brackets for the Bonneville specifically, uh, the calipers are the same, but the brackets let you put on a bigger uh, bigger uh, brake pad. So if you guys have that, send them to me. I will buy. I will buy nice. them. Yep. So this engine will be able to. This will be able to rev higher than your old engine. Yeah. And then it's got uh, just. It's gonna, I'm not going to though. Yeah. Probably six k. Right. Yeah, they say they say with like these kind of uh, these lifters and these uh, these valve springs that you could probably go to like with this cam you could probably go to like sixty seven hundred maybe sixty five safer, but uh, yeah I'll probably keep it at six. We could also clean up the oil pan and put True. that on. Yep, 
definitely need to do that. We got this from somebody. Who did we get this Oh, from? I got it from uh, Bonneville's Unlimited. No one else would sell one to me except uh, Bonneville's Unlimited. We had somebody on uh, Facebook actually offer us one. Oh, yeah. But that was got, too late. We got so this one. Sucked. Yeah, we got this one. What is in here? Soon. A bolt. Nice. So we actually might have some more parts wash content for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves that. What the hell? Just come out. You take the windage tray out. But that would require me unbolting it. I don't want to have to unbolt okay. it just to get this shit out. Where is it right now? I don't know. Ow. I know. It's ragged at the bottom. Holy fuck. The casting is so bad at the bottom of this Jesus. pan. It like scrapes up your fingers. Where is this bolt? Oh boy. There it is. God damn. Wait. Okay. Oh, that's it. I thought I heard another one. Yeah, we can clean this shit up. Oh, yeah. You think O'Reilly's is open? Because yeah, we are. need to get a gasket for this. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they're open. Okay. I could actually get some sanding stuff. This is off topic, but I want to polish my throttle body for my, my supercharger. Hell yeah, you should. Make it mirror shine. I've seen some good techniques that like I want to do. Like Yeah, pretty much. Because uh, I'm not going to splurge on getting a bigger uh, throttle body for my Mustang. Just yet, yeah, because throttle bodies are expensive as fuck for Mustangs. So uh, I got a normal GT500 one. I'm just going to port it a little bit and uh, polish it. <clears throat> I'd love like a like a 90 mil on, my, uh, on the Camaro. That would be sick. That'd be fucking huge. That would be huge. 90 mil on this? Yeah. Holy fuck. That'd be cool. I mean, I mean, it's I got even... a three-inch inlet. I mean, have we shown this new intake yet? Yeah, we have. We've shown it a couple times. Yeah. But it'll be a squeeze to make this work. Yeah. We'll try to figure it out. We. I still need to buy the... Uh, I still have to get the uh, the thermostat to see if that one works. Mm. The 16... Uh... Yeah. Get the AN one. The 16 yeah. AN. I'm also going to put AN lines on my... Uh... Oh, that's right. That's what I was forgetting. going to put AN lines on the transmission. Yep. And then I'm also going to buy a dedicated trans cooler off of a, uh, what was it, S10? Yeah. So that's cool. The S10s have, like, uh, they have the thermostat, like, built into their trans cooler. So that's cool. So I won't have to buy one because, like, uh, thermal bypasses are, like, $60 by themselves, which is ridiculous. And then you'll have to plug up the radiator inputs. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, you're not going to be using that. Also, yeah. he'll stress your actual... Uh, radiator less because it doesn't have to cool the True. transmission. True. So that's a benefit. Also, on top of cooling, new water pump, the uh, upgraded, the big steel finned one. Everybody should get this. It's uh, on our spreadsheet. It's the only water pump on the spreadsheet, so really easy to find, but uh, definitely better. Probably the cheapest, best upgrade with the 800 series. Yep. Guaranteed. Because you can't argue with better cooling, especially when these engines is all they fight is, like, heat. Yep. You don't want less detonation, knock retard. You well, let's go, to, let's go to Riley's or something. Cool. I'm going to grab some of the stuff we need. All right. Uh, we are back from the uh, all the parts stores. Uh, we actually were not able to find a gasket. So I've actually got this uh, OEM tool. It's a crank puller. This was uh, back when we were working on tearing down this engine. Uh, the crank puller we had did not work, so uh, we bought appropriate one. So I'm actually gonna take this pulley off here. All right, just had to get the uh, engine on its side. I got this uh, wrench pried between the crank there, so I'm actually able to turn this now without it uh, rotating the whole assembly. As you can kind of see in here, it is uh, slowly coming out. All right, had to swap out for one of the longer bits. The uh, second longest did not work. Bottom, bottomed it out, but uh, we're very close to getting this off here. Goodness. Ah! Oh, a spider. <laughs> the <laughs> fuck, what? <laughs> Fucking, a spider was like right up in my face for a second. Nice. So I'm just about to take this off. This is probably just gonna fall. Right off. There we go. There we go. So now that the balancer is off here, 
we are actually able to take off the front cover, remove the cam, and then remove the main uh, the mains down there and take the crank out. And that'll probably be it for this engine and Vince will be able to clean it up and get ready for his project. All right, uh, so we're actually prepping the engine to get painted. So we're trying to get like the front pulley assembly on. Uh, we're just trying to match it together this. We're actually uh, having to reference our, our own videos because uh, you can't exactly remember where all this stuff goes. The fronts of these motors, depending on, you know, what they're going in, are a little bit different. So we just uh, need to reference what we have. So there we go. That's where yep. that pulley goes. So, so this will go on and then this will go on after that. Hold no. On. Yeah. That doesn't go on at all. What the fuck? Then where do we pull, pull the coils from? It goes there. It's just... Guaranteed it. It doesn't Nothing. Sit. Nothing goes in between there. You, we literally just watched the video, my dude. They dude, ain't I nothing. Can't... They ain't nothing. Grab your coils. The fuck? The coils have they to sit on They didn't have that bracket. I know it looked like that from the video. Go grab it. Go but that's... Uh... That ain't true. That doesn't sit like that. Oh, it sits on there, right? And right there? Yeah. I don't know what that's for. Could bolt right there. Is there a... Yeah, there is. Yeah, that's how it does. Mm. So there was no bracket there. I bet the limb sits... Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, piecing together. Told you that didn't go there. There's no way... It... I still don't believe that it don't. What? This is literally proof right here. Okay, well, that fits on like that fine, right? Yeah. That'll bolt in there. Yeah, this is literally how it's done. The I fuck? know what you're talking about. I've seen these on all the engines we worked literally, on. Literally, it was one... on the car we had it. <laughs> it was on my Bonneville. Okay. So, like... I reviewed the video, and this is how it came off. Tristan unbolted this, and he was confused when it came off, too. He was just like, how did this come out? Because he just unbolted it, and I even said it in the video because you unbolted it. This is how this goes on right here. And that's all there was. When we were removing the cylinder head, you can watch it. I think it's, like, part or I'm something. I'm so confused because I and, uh, when video. we're removing this cylinder head, this is how it was attached. But I, I watched a video with you, and that's why I'm so confused because, like, I know that black bracket was always on my bottom. We, we, we just watched different videos, clearly. And so, I don't know where the... F I'm going crazy? Yep. I guess? So this goes on like that. Those coil packs are just held in right here and right there. So, that's what we're, we're going to proceed with. So uh, we also have the uh, this guy right here. This guy bolts up. Um, how did we have it? Right like that, or opposite? Yeah, exactly like that. Yep, that like it. coolant hose goes in there, pulley, and then power steering. Or sorry, alternator sits right here. Power steering would sit below. So uh, yeah, we're getting this slowly put back together. <laughs> Unfortunately, this has been a, a fairly long project, so uh, we're having to remember stuff. Also, going through all our bolts, we didn't necessarily mark them. Kind of our bad, but uh, we're getting it. It'll, it's coming together. All right, guys, we are back. I did some uh, parts cleaning off camera because I don't think you guys really want to see that. Got these uh, transmission parts, and this goes on top of the engine, and this is actually part of Project F's uh, engine, but I uh, got these cleaned up as best I could. They're actually still kind of like greasy to the touch. But that's just because this came off of the transmission and uh, it blew an axle on it. So it's the grossest grease possible. So uh, we got these. Uh, Here, I have a push rod. Nice. New gaskets on. Um, their fitment is very weird compared to these blue ones. These blue ones, which was uh, what we used before, fit perfectly. These ones, not so much. But once they got the lower intake manifolds on it, squishing it, I don't think it's going to be a problem. These are like the redesigned good AC Delco gaskets from ZZP and from like anywhere else you can get these. And uh, I've actually used this gasket before and had no problem with these guides before. It's just this particular one is fucked. Yep. And also one of these was like popped out that I had to push back one in. dowels, yeah. And so hopefully like that doesn't fuck with the, uh, the ceiling of it. But let's put, put the shit back on. on. Very carefully. We also epoxied these uh, cooling bits. That's good. Right there. Okay. And uh, we did parts wash this a little bit, but we blew out all most of the water. All of the water. <laughs> I don't want to say most. All yeah, the water. It, it was it was 
um, a good majority of it, but uh, it should be fine for painting it for now. Yeah, so we're going to uh, tie, or uh, bolt this down to spec because there's no reason for us to take this off now. And uh, we'll just cover it with some painter's tape on the top so we don't get any tape on, or paint on there. And uh, I don't think we're gonna, like I said earlier, I don't think we're gonna put the supercharger on when we install it just so we have more clearance to the back of the engine when we put it in. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this bolted on and covered up with tape and then start painting. We also have these old uh, valve covers from his engine uh, that we're just gonna put on and paint over because they're just, I mean, they're going in the trash after this basically, right? <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these on and uh, come back once we're, I think, well, we also need to put the back cover on too. I cleaned that up. Oh, so shit. we gotta do that before we start painting. That's right. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys, uh, we got this uh, engine flipped over. Got the oil pan on. I just put a uh, oil filter that we had from Project F just for paint. Uh, we got a couple of bolts in to hold the oil pan on. Got everything else taped in. We got spark plugs. These paint ones we put in uh, <laughs> from Project F yet. Got the other side all done. So uh, should be good to go and uh, start painting this thing, I think, right? Yeah, There's I probably think some... just a few more things I'm going to clean up real quick. And uh, like this, I'm going to take the other side of the crankshaft, and I think it's good. Yeah, definitely. If there's any other sensors I find on here, I'll tape up, but I don't see any. Yep, should be all good to go. We also got the uh, back cover cleaned up new, uh, who's it called it? The rear main seal, which we're going to cover up the crank and rear main. Uh, obviously you're never going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. True. <clears throat> so, again, the rest of the stuff painted up, or sorry, taped up, and then we're going to go ahead and get paint. Yeah, there's just a few spots on here from, uh, from flipping over. I noticed that, like, oil got on the side of the block that I'll have to take off. And, uh, this oil paint, or, yeah, oil paint's just a little dirty, and that'll be it before I get some primer on it. Yep. I'll be excited. And we're actually painting it uh, red, same color as my Mustang, actually. Or racing red, or whatever the color it's actually called. It's like dark candy apple red, or sangria, or red torch, or something sangria, like that. Sangria, damn. Yep. Hot damn, that's a fancy color. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this ready to go and start painting it. And uh, we are by no means prepping this like 100%. Like, True. we're just taking off, like, the surface grease and whatnot as best we can. I mean, we're not going to see, like, almost any of this. Mostly the top side. True. So, so if we're going through, the, you know, the effort of painting, I just don't want it to get ruined. As in, like, <laughs> while we're still spraying it. Getting some nice uh, primer on there. Engines have so many nooks and crannies to them. Yep. They're like see. hard to paint. Two. The primer makes it so much easier. Yeah, to see where you're spraying. Cool. Excited to see what this red comes out to be. Yeah, same. Dude, these push rods are actually gonna kill us. Here, I'm let's... Gonna, I'm gonna put them away. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, we're gonna let this uh, dry a bit, add another primer coat probably, and uh, clean up around here, uh, because this, we're pretty much done for today other than painting the engine here and uh it is getting kind of late it is uh 5 30 so uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit wait for this to dry and then uh add another coat and then probably add some actual paint oh, yeah. coats did everyone see these yeah okay. these valve covers he uh got sandblasted so they were much better and then um or i sandblasted my sail yeah and then put paint on them cool so uh we'll go ahead oh damn we actually forgot to put a part on what's that Ugh. This part. Shit. Well, I'll just. It's not even cleaned it either. Oh yeah, it's not even clean. Fuck it. Just paint it separately. That part goes right here. Yeah. All right. Whatever. That's fine. I'm also gonna tape this up so I can paint this. Yep. All right, guys, we are back. 
we've uh, done a couple coats of clear or uh, primer on this. We've actually also uh, painted the exhaust bits a little bit more. They don't need to be perfect, just a uh, little bit decent. This one actually fell, so it's uh, got a little boo-boo, but that's fine. I don't know where they are. Oh, there they are. Red paint, there we go. So uh, other side of this is actually drying a bit, but this side is dry, so we're gonna go ahead and spray a little bit. See what it looks like on the engine. Also cleaned up just a little bit. So you have a bit more organized, kind of hard to conceptualize this as clean. Considered clean, but it is. But it is. Nice. That does look like my Mustang paint color. Wow. That is looking really good. Just do not spray like that. And over there. Don't spray that. Don't spray that, Davis. Yeah, this run with black exhaust and a black supercharger would look pretty cool. Yep, yeah, or I mean silver and black, uh, depending on how you keep it. Yeah, I definitely need more coats. It's going to be hard to pick up on camera, but there's still tons of gray coming through. All right, guys. Uh, we're pretty much done for the moment. Uh, we are letting this dry, and then we're going to do... Uh, some clear coat, but uh, the clear coat might gloss it up even more, but it's pretty glossy as is And you just see how red it is compared to the uh, engine over here the the AMC blue of this uh, uh, Project F's engine They came out. It's pretty cool the the differences and uh, I hate these gross valve covers on here. I just want to put the new ones on right now Yeah, get a video with um, with the with the light on it nice I can definitely tell a few places are just, you know, nooks and crannies are not painted, but whatever. It looks really good. Yeah. Definitely. We also, um, uh, I don't think we have enough clear coat for the engine at all. So definitely not. I'm going to have to get more. Yep. So, so the, uh, engine can, the engine can sit and I can clear it another day. We're just waiting for uh, transmission parts and some other things. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we're probably going to go ahead and end it off here. Got the garage cleaned up. And uh, next weekend, we should have more of the transmission stuff that we can get together. Tristan's going to drop off the input shaft as well as the torque converter and uh, flex flex flywheel for flywheel. Pro Project F at a transmission shop so they can get those all taken care of. And then yeah. the, tra the, the machine shop that, uh, that had my flywheel and flex plate, they uh, didn't machine the surface of the flex plate, even though I flywheel. asked them to. Flywheel. Um, so just gonna take it to the transmission shop. Hopefully, uh, all that shit is not too expensive. The input shaft just needs, uh, three rings put on it, which is done by a special yeah. tool. These, uh, green Teflon rings that are on the old one need to go on the new one. And the, uh, tor or the flux plate getting machine resurfaced, not a big job. And then also, uh, the bushing for the torque converter being taken out and put in, those are all all really small jobs so yep. hopefully it doesn't take too long and hopefully they don't charge me too much yep okay. also next weekend we'll probably get this engine out of the garage uh vince should come over with this truck and uh we can take the mains out the crank cam front cover and uh you should be ready to load that in there so even more space open up in the garage we'll have the transmission put back together shortly this block will weigh like 80 pounds less without the cam and uh crank, crank in there and mains for sure and uh, then we'll be able to get the transmission in the Bonneville, engine in the Bonneville, and then we'll finally be able to return our attention to Project F to Camaro that's been sitting here for a while and uh, finally get it done. We actually looked inside today and uh, the the tunnel where the transmission is, the shifter location, it's a mold uh, since it was open and we just forgot about it, I guess. It kind of molded a little bit on some of the surfaces. Dave just, just so brought it to my attention today. Yeah. I didn't actually even know about it. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, so we're just gonna get a carpet, some carpet seats, cleaner and some carpet. It's it's very very light, so it's not yeah. bad. On the steering wheel, weirdly enough, specifically, yeah. Um, 
But there's no water in the car. It doesn't even look like it has too much condensation in it. It's not fogging up like my fucking Honda does. So. It did rain for a month straight in January, though. Yeah, and what is it doing on now? Yep, raining. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end off the video. Uh, subscribe, like the video, comment down below. Definitely. Tell and, us what uh, you think about this color. Yeah, comment. It. We love the comments. It's the best part of the whole thing. Uh, That's my favorite uh, part of YouTubing. Yep. Uh, this is literally just the f color matched paint that you could get at any part store as his Mustang. And again, that's AMC Blue. In yep. case you want to paint either of your uh, thingy jigs, uh, this color. Yep. You should do that. So, uh, yep. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you later.